If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual coach. Today is Mystical Mondays. And as always, I am here with my co-host, Joshua Radawan, spiritual coach. And Josh, this topic was your idea. We are talking about a can, what, what was, what is the title of this again? <laughs> can this gemstone cure my bad Tinder date? Crystals 101. So we're, we're talking about crystals today. So give me an idea of what, why did you pick this topic? What is it that, that you wanted to talk about here? You know, so I, I had an you know, we owned a metaphysical shop, as you owned a metaphysical shop. Yep. And, you know, like one of the things that I, I found is that a lot of people that really are beginning on their journey, they use a lot of crystals. They they yep. come to work with the, with the sympathetic magic with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, you know, you are the crystal queen. Like you, you know, you have given me so much over the over the years on what to work with. The book that I work with, uh, what is it, Love is in the Earth, is just, Love been a is fan, the Earth. just a fantastic book. And, and really... What, what's interesting about that book is it goes against so much of what's out there in, you know, like, you know, on the internet. And, you know, I have found that when tapping into that, it, it's been just, it seems so much more accurate because it's not just some AI generated bullshit. <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that was yeah. written by somebody who really cared and really tapped in. So, you know, I, I've used crystals throughout my journey. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not one who's like so into it that, you know, I'm carrying around with me all the time. There has been parts on my journey, but, you know, like they usually call to me. They don't like say, hey, come over here because I don't, you know, like that's not a good sign. But, uh, you know, like <laughs> I, I'll get the, the feeling that this one wants to work with me. You know, like over the last com couple months, I was working with a Super 7, which I had never heard of before, which was pretty powerful. Um, what is that? I've never heard of that. Uh, it has seven. It, it's it's a condensed crystal that has seven different types. Uh, I want to say amethyst, quartz, a whole bunch of different things in one. And uh, it's really, really a powerful crystal. Um, it was actually one of Cassie's crystals. Um, and that did help me quite a bit over the last couple of months. But I, you know, I, I work with amethyst, angelite, you know, a uh, lot, lot of different ones. You know, I, I but I, they, they just come in, they teach me a little bit, you know, like they, I sit with them, you know, but, you know, like the, the, the deep level crystal work isn't something on the path that was like one of my, my major callings, but I know that you, you do because you teach it, you, you've taught it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of work with crystals earlier in my life and um, <clears throat> I actually used a selenite wand to do the Reiki attunements that I used to do back in the day. And uh, that wand became infused with that energy, right? So, you know, there are different ways to use crystals. I, I actually bought a amethyst tower when I was uh, going cross country with a friend of mine. And <clears throat> I actually attuned that tower with its permission to Reiki 2, ultimately. It took me a year to get it from Reiki I did the first Reiki tune and then it, it wasn't ready for another one until a, like a year later. And I attuned it to Reiki too. And I would have it in my Reiki room when I would do Reiki healings for people. And uh, yeah, I'm a Reiki master teacher. I don't teach it anymore. I don't really do Reiki anymore, but I am officially a Reiki master teacher. And, and uh, <clears throat> I originated Reiki for magic users, which is a different type of attunement than a traditional Reiki one, because uh, I had a, a student who kept throwing off his attunements because part of the attunement process is binding the hands with the Reiki symbols so that the energy goes through. And he kept wanting to do things that he didn't want to send through Reiki. And then, so he kept breaking the attunements. So I had to change the attunement. So to work for him, but it wasn't um, me, by the way, what does what mean? It, uh, no, I said it wasn't me by the way. <laughs> oh no, it wasn't you. No, no. No, this was years before I ever met you. This was, oh, wow. This is probably 15 years ago. But yeah, so I had to, to fix that. So, but the, uh, the, the selenite wand that I used was being used for the angelic Reiki attunement, which I got from my Reiki master, Kathy Valentine. And so, you know, the, the 
if you use a crystal for one thing consistently, it will become infused with that one thing, right? They're, crystals are programmable. I mean, we, we program crystals all the time in technology spaces, right? And Atlantean technology was crystal-based. So <clears throat> we have all of these, these ways in which crystals can be used, but we don't have the current technology to do it on a larger scale, like, like back in Atlantis, which I remember being in. But, you know, but crystals will talk to you. They also will phase into and out of existence. I have talked to people before who have had crystals just disappear and they just gone, right? <laughs> So, and when a crystal is done with you, it may do that, right? Or it could do, yeah, go ahead. So No, it's so funny you said that because a couple of weeks ago, I had a, a specific stone. I'm trying to, I forgot what it was right now. Garnet. I was using garnet for protection. And I, you know, it was in my altar. I swear it was in my altar. And it's gone. I was like, well, that's cool. And then I was going outside the other day and it was just like hanging out in the yard. And I was like, what are you doing here? So I, I brought it back in the house and now it's, needed it's back. Needed to be at, cleansed. Yeah, 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 you know. It needed to be cleansed. So it went to the yard, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that makes sense. But Unless I wanted to share that because they do that. And okay. you, you had told me about that before. And I was like, well, I haven't witnessed that yet. And they're like, aha, <laughs> watch this. I'm like, oh. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, there's, there's a whole thing, you know, they'll, they'll phase into and out of existence or they'll do to, to you what it did to me, which is I was out at a pagan pride day back in 2002, I think. And I was selling my, my jewelry <clears throat> my, I used to make transformational jewelry and, and, uh, I had brought my crystals with me just to lay them out and let them bake in the sun and just get some you know, recharge and whatever. And I had those off to the side and everybody kept trying to buy my freaking crystals. And I'm like, I'm not selling my crystals. I'm selling my jewelry. Leave them alone. Right. And you know, the, <laughs> so I've been saying this to people all day. And then this woman walks up, picks up a crystal and says, how much? And I said, $18, which is exactly how much I paid for it. She gave me the money and walked off and I sat there with my jaw on the ground and my friend who was working the booth with me was, I, I said, did you see that? She said, what, the crystal take over your mouth and say $18? I said, yes. <laughs> I was like, I didn't want to sell that crystal. And she's like, but the crystal needed to go with her. <laughs> I was like, yeah, clearly it did because I did not say that. That was not me. <laughs> and so... Yeah. So yeah. funny you say that because, you know, like the days I do carry crystals, which is less and less, you know, over time. But it's like, I'll just be like, oh, you know, like I have some ones that I've really worked with for four years that are like, you know, like they came to me. I really feel the, the energy with them. Right. And they're like, oh, I want to go with you today. And then I'll see somebody and they're like, we want to go with them now. And I'm like, OK, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then it's, it's happened so often. Um, so, so often over the last year, especially that they, they just yeah. seem to want to, they're like, we've done our work with you. It's time to go on down the road. Yes. And so, you know, crystals have their own consciousness, you know, and so you do need to pay attention to that, but you also want to be careful if a crystal reaches out to like grab at you from a store. I'd be careful with that. I had a student who was particularly good at picking up every possessed crystal there ever was. <laughs> she just this I, I i don't know how she did it i swear to god but she would buy every possessed crystal there was and i i finally just said you're not allowed to buy crystals <laughs> like stop it because your your discernment is not so good so uh you do need to be careful about that and don't buy things that say that they have something in them because everything that's ever been bound into a crystal is not a good thing okay you don't get bound into a crystal or bound into anything unless you suck, okay? And by the time you're bound into it, you are pissed. And anyone who's in contact with anything that you've been bound into, you're going to fuck with. So don't buy shit like that, okay? Please don't do that, okay? All right, enough said on that. <clears throat> now, crystals. So there's some things you need to know about crystals. And so things like... You don't put fluoride out in the sun. It will fade it. 
Okay, so you need to know these things. Love is in the Earth is a great book. It can teach you absolutely everything you need to know about your crystals. It's like, you know, three inches thick. The thing is just chock full of information. And it predates the freaking internet. So, you know, it is good information, not the crap information that Josh was referencing. And it's really, really comprehensive. And so I, I love it. It's a great book. And so you don't, so I'm going to give you some basics. You don't, when you're going to cleanse things, you want to make sure that you're cleansing them in a way that is not going to destroy your crystal. So like you don't put calcite in water. Why? Because calcite is a salt. It will dissolve in water. That would be bad. Okay. We don't, we don't cleanse our calcite in water. So to cleanse crystals, you have several paths. You can put them in water if they are one that can go in water, right? And Or you can bury them in the earth, or you can put them in the moonlight, or you can put them in the sunlight, depending upon what they can do. Like fluorite, you could put in the moonlight. That would not be a problem. But you want to make sure that you're cleansing them on the regular. And, you know, for me, I can just grab a crystal in my hand and, and cleanse it, right? just intending to cleanse it and it's just done some some people have a huge piece of selenite because selenite will also cleanse things and so if you have a big piece of selenite you can just stick other crystals on it and it will clear the crystals the thing that you want to pay attention to especially is hematite because hematite which is one of the most common things that is sold in crystal shops and you know online stores with bracelets and necklaces and stuff Hematite gathers in negative energy until it's full and then it dumps it and it will dump it back into your aura if you haven't cleansed it. Okay. So you want to cleanse, cleanse hematite regularly. And the more negativity that you're dealing with in your life, which in the U S right now with all the crap that's going on, that's like daily. Okay. The, you just, you, because It'll collect all the negative energy and then dump it right back to you. And that's a great way to get sick. It's a great way to be pissed off all the time. It's a great way to have a cloud over your head and look like pig pen in your aura. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a great way to have horrible things happen. So you've got to be careful with hematite. Yeah, it's great for cleansing, but you've got to cleanse it. <clears throat> okay. Now, amethyst is an amplifier. So anything you want to do, amethyst will amplify. Okay. And the same thing is true for quartz. Quartz is a, it's not, it's not as much of an amplifier as amethyst is. It's more like an energy creator, right? So not creator, but channeler. It'll channel energy for you. And so regular quartz, clear quartz is a, is an energy channeler. Smoky quartz is a protection, right? It, it helps to protect in addition for protection, you can also look at onyx. You can look at garnet. There are a lot of very protective stones. <clears throat> now, angelite. You referenced angelite earlier. I have a great story about angelite. So a friend of mine years ago had a boss who was a pain in the ass. I mean, just horrible. <laughs> Micromanager, never happy, blah, blah, blah. I gave them instructions to go into their boss's office after hours and tape, you know, duct tape a piece of angelite to the underside of the boss's desk in a place that they would never find it. And the entire experience of their boss changed as a result of that angelite being in the room with their boss. So, you know, now obviously you'd need to clear that periodically too. <laughs> so you got to cleanse the angelite. So you might want to buy two pieces of angelite and trade them out. Right. But, you know, just having the angelite in the room was a huge bonus for the boss, the boss's attitude. Um, and so, you know, these are the, the types of things that, that can come into play. Uh, I, I, <laughs> so I told you I used to make jewelry. Um, there was a woman who was a voodoo priestess and she worked, uh, she ran a, a booth at the pagan festivals that I went to and she would sell these oils. Some of them had what she called brain weasels in them. You know, they were, I don't know what they were. They were some sort of hallucinogenic, <laughs> so, 
but she had they, these oils were custom made oils that were designed to bring different things into your life. She would custom design them for you, blah, blah, blah. So she was an elder in the community. I mean, a badass elder in the community. And she walked up to my, my booth one day and I, I had this necklace that I had made and the beads on it were massive, right? So the center bead was a 20 millimeter fluorite, fluorite, I think. And then I had 10 millimeter quartz and rose quartz. And, you know, I had a bunch, I mean, it was a big chunky necklace. And when you put it on, it made you buzz, right? (laughs) Nobody could wear it for more than a few minutes without being like, right. And I was I was really early on in my process of making jewelry at that point, and I had I don't even know if I had recognized that I was every piece I made was for someone specific. I don't think I had realized that yet at this point. But when I had my store, you know, I, I started doing this to have cheap stuff to to sell at my store because I didn't have a lot of money when I got the store started, and it was cheaper to buy the beads than it was to buy the necklaces already made. <clears throat> but when I had my store. I realized after about a year that when somebody's face would light up and they would be like, woo, about a necklace, if they didn't take it with them, I needed to just take it apart because no one would ever see the necklace again. Not like they wouldn't like it. They wouldn't even register it was there, right? It was just like invisible because it was meant for that person who didn't take it. And so I didn't realize that before this event. And so... (laughs) I'm at this event and this elder walks up and I clearly made this necklace for her because she walks up and she goes, I know what that is. And I'm like, good. Tell me what it is. Because I, didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, really? What is it? And she said, that's a warp core. And I, I looked at it. I was like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> because, you know, it was like this massive energy generator. And, and she said, I'll trade you for it. And I'm like, sure. So she made me an oil and I traded her for that. And she used that. So she used to do these rituals. She did grail rituals. Now grails are, are grail rituals are manifestation rituals where everybody in the circle puts their energy into the grail and drinks from it. And that allows things to manifest. And she used to do these at random times. She would do a ritual, grail ritual, maybe two over the course of a week at this pagan festival. And it would always be at the drum circle, always be overnight. So you just, you never knew when it was going to be because she'd just show up and do it. Right. <clears throat> and so she wore it for the grail ritual that year. And she was like, yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they, Crystals can do a lot of things. I used to create these tra- these transformational jewelries, necklaces, and people would wear them. And so what I would do is I would, I would sit with them and say, okay, talk to me about where you want to be, right? And as they would talk to me, I would get a feel for the energy of who the person was that they were becoming in order to do that. And then I would build that energy into the necklace using all the different crystals. And then they would wear that necklace until they could live into that energy, which generally took six to nine months, right? And then they would send the necklace back to me and I would take it apart and cleanse it and then use it for somebody else, right? And, or build the next one for them, right? And so, you know, it was a powerful tool for, for, bringing somebody into that new energetic, right? Yeah, it's interesting to say that. I I had one particular piece of jewelry come to me, was it 2022? And I'd never heard of it, it was Ammonite. I was really working on some root chakra stuff at the time, you know, like, you know, you know my story, you know, like there was a lot of uh, attack. So, you know, my root chakra was fucking shot, you know, from from everything. And I I had come across Ammonite, just randomly, somebody had pulled a card for me and it said Ammonite. I was like, I've never heard of that. And then I just happened to, you know, look up Ammonite on Amazon. And there was this woman that was making Ammonite necklaces. She had made one, just one. And that, that necklace stayed with me for about eight months. And after that, I gifted it to a shaman, actually, that I was at a show with that was struggling with some stuff and very cool guy. But that was a very powerful piece of jewelry f- for me. Yeah. And that's how it can work, right? 
You know, I did one that had Fox Energy in it, which was, you know, taking away things you thought you needed until you you like, wait, this has been gone for a month and I didn't notice it was gone. I must not need it. Right. Yeah. It's that sort of energy. So there's all sorts of ways to build stuff in like that. And, you know, things like rotocrosite and rose quartz are great for your heart and opening up your heart and getting getting relationships to smooth out and be easier and things like that. So, you know, there's so much you can learn from the book Love is in the Earth, and I would highly recommend picking that up. Um, <clears throat> it is really the the seminal Bible of, you know, everything, everything crystals and, you know, make use of them until you don't need them. Right. You know, I, I, I have some crystals in the house here, not because I bought them, but because they were gifted to me. Um, and I'm, you know, they're sitting there, they're great. I like them and I enjoy them, but it's uh, crystals are no longer an active part of my life. Like they used to be, I used to be very into them. I had a window quartz, which was, it had sort of frosted around the edges and then one section that was polished clear. And so it was clear quartz, but frosted around the edges. And, and I used to use that to see into people's chakras when I was doing energy healing work. And that was really awesome. I used to put quartzes, I used to put different crystals that represented the colors of the chakras on somebody's body when I was working on them for the, or underneath the table sometimes for when I was working on them for energy healing work. All of these things are ways in which crystals can be used. And so, you know, crystals are a super valuable sympathetic magic or not really... Honestly, they're, they're kind of conscious, so they're really more of a partner that you participate with than sympathetic magic per se, but they are, they're lovely for use in that way. But again, they, as you develop your magical abilities, you will likely not need them long, you know, further along in your journey. So, you know, just, it's, it's like anything else. We... We need help when we get started. And then once we're competent, then we're like, oh, no, I'm good. I got this, right? I don't need a window quartz to see into somebody's chakras now. I can just look, right? I, I don't need something to amplify my energy. I can just tap in and get more energy anytime I need, right? All of those things. And so as you become more evolved in, in your, your mastery of your energy skills, these, these will fade away. But as you're getting started, they're fantastic partners on the journey. So I think that'll do it for this week. But uh, join us ne next week for more Mystical Mondays. And don't forget to check out the other episodes this week. We've got a lot of different topics that are happening for you. Lots of great stuff. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And just remember... What you focus on expands and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,